Hello again, welcome to The Ref Show. It comes uh, with uh, an X-rated certification, you could say, this week. Uh, not only because we've got Mark Lawrence and, uh, back on the show and the average age of the panel is increasing week by week with Keith Hackett here. But because of dangerous challenges, to be serious, uh, we've got examples of referees doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing over the weekend in the Premier League. Plus respect, or it seems a lack of, continuing to be a lack of, in the junior game. An alarming episode re related to youarethereft.com. You can see it on the website. We'll be talking uh, about respect generally in the junior game. And are referees biting back, I wonder, in their comments to players and managers on the field? We've seen an exa some examples, Mark, we'll get into this in the second half, of referees making sarcastic comments, if you, if you like, at times. Eh? I don't have a problem with that. I think, I think it was a bit like that in our day, wasn't it? Oh, many, absolutely. In many, many ways. Yeah, yeah. It shows you're not a robot. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have a problem. And if it's funny, even better. Have a bit of a laugh and a joke and yeah. take away some of the tension. We'll go into that and those specific incidents in the second half of the show. We've got those dangerous challenges coming up. But first of all, maybe an award... Uh, for courage, bravery, you, you know full well what it's like at St James's Park. You were at one time defensive coach up there at Newcastle. So, uh, great shot from 25 yards. Teote buries one at St James's early on in the game uh, against West Brom at the, the weekend. Gets disallowed. A brave assistant referee, Harry Leonard, there. That talk a bit of bottle, didn't it, really? Well, isn't that not, isn't that not his job, though? If, if you know, his <laughs> it's his yeah. job. But listen, listen. Maybe, maybe Harry's can be quite sarcastic. So maybe add a little bit of banter back. Listen, if it's the right decision, I don't think anybody has a problem with it. I think the problem for Newcastle is they feel that they're in dire straits at the moment, aren't they? Obviously, they got a win at, at the weekend, but um, they're just desperate for anything. So it's by hook or by crook. But I don't know. It's like I go and watch Preston, and there's a guy next to me. I've never heard so many swear words in my life when a decision goes against them. But he pays his money yep. and he takes his choice. So it's the way of the world, isn't it? Well, absolutely. But he, Lee Mason was the referee, goes across there. Of course, there's a player in the line of vision of, of the goalkeeper. So you reckon that correctly? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the referee's got to be involved in that process. I think he just took a little bit of time to get there. That's fine, though. But, but yeah, he got it right. And, and credit to the assistant. He is doing his job, as Mark said. And uh, he's got to raise the flag. And then the, the discussion, if you like, came to the right call. And Harry Leonard comes out of it particularly well in the end anyway. To his relief, Newcastle score what proves to be the winning goal shortly afterwards. Happy so days. Everybody's, everybody's every, happy, apart from West Brom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Guy Beale uh, for raising that point with us. Guy was uh, on RefCam over the weekend as well to see a great performance from Michael Oliver, which we'll come to. But those dangerous challenges. Uh, the one on the Sunday game, Arsenal's victory at Bournemouth. Kevin Friend was in charge there early in the game. How influential was this? Flamin not dismissed, should he have been dismissed? Yeah. It was two-footed. Yeah, and it was after, I think, eight minutes, if my memory serves me right. Yeah. And, and, and I don't care. Someone said to me, oh, well, maybe because maybe it was early, he didn't want to send him off. Absolute rubbish. If it's eight seconds or 88 minutes and it's a, it's a poor challenge and it's a red card, it's a red card. End of. And I mean, to be fair to Bournemouth, they're not a complaining club, are they? But I think even Eddie Howe's kind of gone, look, that really, really seriously would have changed the game, 10 against 11. Of course, 2-0 win in the end for us. It almost makes it worse that the referee, Kevin Friend, administers a yellow card. That kind of, almost, if, he, if there's no card at all, he's missed it. But it's a yellow. Well, it's incompetence, putting it mildly. I mean, the law's the law. And, and the amount of coaching that he's had, where a player launches with two feet, the expectation is he's out of control, he has to go. And... You know, it sends the wrong message out. This player, who hasn't then received the red card, suddenly thinks, well, I can get away with it possibly next time. And all the other players that have had a red card probably think, well, there's an injustice. You've got to have the courage on the big decisions. If you're going to referee the big matches, and Kevin Friend wants to be top line, then he's got to have the courage to apply the law correctly. And on this one, I thought it was an easy decision not easy from a courage point of view, he's got to show it, but he should have gone that player, no question. He knew, for me, he must have thought, I'm off. Yeah. He must Look, have done it, his heart was in his mouth, thinking, oh, I've gone. 
And I'm sure Arsenal. And the other thinking, players around him. Yeah, they knew as well. Yeah, and Wenger's thinking, oh, what we're going to do now? Yeah. Who we're going to bring on? Take someone else off because he's gone. Mm. Talking about courage on big decisions, Keith talking about there. Mark Clattenburg, this was Southampton 1, West Ham 0, sending off their third time this season, I think, Victor Wanyama. Now, a lot of people raised eyebrows about this and said, hang on, he's not even caught the player, actually, or injured the player. That's not relevant, is it? No. Don't have to. It, it's, it's irrelevant in law. It's a reckless challenge with excessive force. You know, what needs to happen here, and this is back to the guy who's in charge of the referees, he needs to knock on the door of the manager of the club and say, look, can I come and see you? And let's see the player. I did that with David Moyes with Fellani years ago. To have a debate with the player, with the manager, with the coaching, to try to avoid a red card. I mean, ultimately, the referee doesn't want to issue red cards if it can be avoided. I think it's education here. He's, played in a, he's probably played somewhere else in another country that's allowed that type of challenge. He's come here. Scotland. He's got yeah. Played in well, Scotland, Manyama. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's, there's a story. But the that is about, a foreign country, definitely. Yeah, it a foreign is definitely country. Foreign country, especially if you live in Sheffield. <laughs> yeah. The other, the other thing about that as well is is that's his third yeah. of the seat at Wanyama. And Kuman said something afterwards about talking about it, and he said, "I've told him he just cannot do it." And he said the bottom line is, A, he's going to get sent off, but also he said it punishes us because we're playing with 10 men. Another topic for later, talking about foreign countries, uh, I wonder if you two find it strange that here we are in a Premier League with loads of foreign managers, uh, surf it almost, of foreign players. We've got no foreign influence on refereeing in this country at all. Are they, are they, allowed, to, are they allowed to referee? Yeah, yeah right. they could do, but Ship maybe it's in. a debate. Yeah. OK, we'll talk about that maybe in the second part. Michael Oliver, Chelsea won Manchester United, won Guy Beal on ref cam, full of praise, exceptional performance, he said, from Oliver. There's a tactical point on this. I, you and I, uh, Loro, wouldn't notice, but Guy did on ref cam and Keith noticed. It involved Costa and Rooney and the referee's tactics. What were they? Uh, he was shadowing them. He'd clearly done his pre-match to recognise that these were players that could, could ignite the game. And, and create a problem and therefore what you do is you try and nurse them through that process by being in their space without confrontation you can be having that quiet word you can have a word of encouragement you know you, you, we, I, you had to do that with Paul Gascoigne at times you know we had that process when Gascoigne was sat in the te technical area as a, as a sub we knew that every minute that he wasn't in the game he was getting fired up, His fired head was up, boiling. fired up. And there were occasions when he comes straight on, bang, yellow card within seconds. So we said, look, we'll accompany him. Whether we were doing the right thing, I felt that we were. So we'd probably go across, and as he's coming on, we might say, hey, welcome to the game, enjoy it. Paul, can't understand why you spent so long on the, on the, the area. This is the conversation we talked about earlier. Referees used to have words of encouragement. You know, it might be you're having a bad game, ref, well, you're not doing so well either. Or, come on, Keith, keep it going. Or, I can remember... Oh, Keith, you're not you... very fit. I wasn't. <laughs> I, I can remember a time... I can you weren't alone. I can remember a time with refereeing George Best. We'd been on the... It was an awful day. He was playing for Fulham. We'd been on the field about 20 minutes, and he said, come on, I call it off. <laughs> he, he didn't want to be there. So here, on Sunday, specific incident. So he's shepherding Costa and Rooney in the early stages. Good luck with that one. Yeah. 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 But it seemed to work. The game's under control and he comes well, out with a good performance. you know, uh, there's no doubt that Costa, on, on many occasions, you can't referee him. No. Absolutely, totally no. cannot referee him. You know, no. South American, um, Latin temperament. And it's, everyone's aware now that he, he does it to get himself playing. But the problem is it's to the detriment of himself and sometimes he's get, he gets people sent off. I mean, go back to that Arsenal game early on in the season and it was, I um, can't remember which of the centre-backs he, he got sent off that day, but it, I mean, it was just, he threw the line out and the fella went for it and, yeah, and yeah. off you go. But he has to be the most difficult player in the league to refer because he, do, he, doesn't, he doesn't really tackle, occasionally he leaves his foot in, but it's all, it's all in your face, shouting, spitting, haranguing, aggression, pressure, all that. Kind. So you've got, to, you've got to be a good referee to stand up to it. Yeah. Leicester City. If you see a Leicester fan, don't wake him up. <laughs> it's I mean, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. They are, though, and they have been for a while. 
The only team actually trying to win it, which sounds a bit stupid because then you go, well, what about Tottenham and Man City and, and, and Arsenal? Every single game they play, they try and win the game. 4-4-2. Well, 4-4-2. They don't not necessarily worry about the opposition. They think, you play, we play, we'll beat you. I mean, everybody's now cottoning on to Hooth and Morgan and Drinkwater, Kante, all those kind of players, mm. taking a little bit of spotlight from Mares and, and Vardy. But they are absolutely fantastic. Where he's been lucky, the manager, is very, very few injuries. He's hardly changed the team. It'll become much more difficult for them, though. Okay. Much more difficult. We'll look ahead to that. Mm. Congratulations, Leicester, whatever happens. It's been a wonderful season. Do uh, rejoin us for part two of the Ref Show. We're talking about respect, back chat from referees, and also, isn't it time that the refereeing setup had some kind of foreign influence? Join us for all of that. <laughs>